kind of just like a uh, an overview and a uh, little jam session on what we did. So, uh, hey, Gabe, I can't see who's in with us. <laughs> Well, we've got a couple of people. I suppose if um, anybody wants to just pipe in, there we go. We've got Nicholas. You could just uh, click on your cameras, click on your mics. You know what? Let me uh, switch. I'm going to switch to my computer because I'm using my phone on here. Cool. Yeah. Hey, Nicholas, while, while he's doing that, you want to introduce yourself? Let us know uh, where you're beaming in from. And uh, My name is Nicholas. Uh, I've been tattooing for six years uh, from uh, Westfield, Massachusetts. I work out in Northampton, Mass at Bang Bang Body Arts been there for about two years now um and yeah i'm out here to grow man try to be the best that i can be at this Hello. awesome yeah it's fun yeah we're we're, uh, we're neighbors i think we might have been chatting earlier yeah we were yeah definitely awesome. Gabe. very cool and then uh, let's see uh robert we've got your your audio here i don't know if we can click on your camera but uh it was pretty awesome i think you're the the person we're going to showcase the machine I've got some of your pictures fired up. Great. Uh, yeah, I have a running machine. So uh, I had a really nice time building it. So Awesome. Uh, Any chance you could turn on your camera? Yeah. I'll try. <laughs> awesome. Hey, yeah. <laughs> This guy, by the way, you got to check out his Instagram page. He's a sick skater, man. Sick. Yeah, cool. Nice. Yeah, let me see it. Yeah, dude. Solid. Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, that's, that's the machine we build in the course. Um, I don't know if y'all... I guess if this is to the public, you really didn't see the one I did. Let me bring it up here. It's basically the same thing Robert did. We worked along together and put these um, together from raw materials using basic hand tools, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, we built, we we start from scratch, just raw pieces of flat steel, three, three sixteenths inch bar, quarter inch bar, some collet tubing. I actually use just brake tubing in my collet, some screws, some five sixteenths rod, three eighths inch bar. I mean, we made everything on here, contact screw. The only thing we didn't make are the, the uh, like the nuts, nuts and bolts. Binding posts, we drilled and tapped, but we I used the stock um, quarter. Oh, shit. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm showing the wrong thing here. Okay, sorry about That's that. Right. <laughs> it's the same thing, just a different person. So no, I was just showing the wrong camera completely. <laughs> nice. But, uh, yeah, that's what we did in, in our course. And in the end, we tuned it. We talked, you know, I interjected stories. We talked about each piece and component. We went into some pretty fine details about some stuff. I, I got some video here that I could be playing too here. Let me, uh, you guys checking this out here? Yep. So if you want to change that on your printout to a number 29. Um, hey, making here. holes. Looking at ceilings. It's in the back of. <laughs> I think I That's my dungeon, dude. Up. Look at that. Again, oh. reinventing's offering offering these uh, videos. Was it's this amazing watching you go here. through this. You can nose that up. We can make this hole bigger. So you have options with these. You could thin this out if you wanted. You know, you could put a twist That's on a it. squiggly line. Oh boy, See what I'm getting at. Oh. You could take all this material out. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like it. It's a little more refined when you go by the plans. <laughs> so, so, Robert, what was the uh, funnest part of, of the experience? Uh, it, it was building it with basic tools. Um, and uh, I, I was really surprised that I built it so accurately. Uh, it's it's all straight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, no milling or anything. Just 
hand cutting and sanding with <laughs> files. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's so uh, satisfying when it's finished. It's really, really, really satisfying when you really build something with your own hands. Yeah, it's great. Was that the first time you built from scratch? From scratch, from yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It turned out time. really well. Yeah, 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 I'm really surprised. <laughs> that being said, what's your next? What is your next project? Do you have another uh, thing lined up? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a shader or color packer. Uh, so next time I'll build uh, probably the same, but the liner. Right. So I, so I have a pair, um, and I have to build one for my. The two friend. <laughs> How it starts. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll just make the part and he will assemble it. So yeah. we'll assemble it together. So yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to. Right on. Are you working on anything else right now? Or are you just uh, you know, start another one? Yeah, yeah. I, I have a couple lined up with. Uh, pre-made bases on, or something. Yeah. So yeah, I have a couple of machines working on right now. Cool, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, we, we do have a couple, we had a couple more people join us. Feel free to uh, unmute yourself and or unvideo yourself, unvideo yourself, revideo yourself, video yourself. And we got Click the buttons, join, Rafa, join the conversation. Eric, Nicholas, I don't know. Yeah. Robert, do you want to uh, run your machine? Can we get to hear it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. If uh, you might have to, I guess this is where we probably should have made sure that anybody doing the um, the sound cancels your Zoom audio dampening, but we'll just do our best. Bear, bear with us, everyone. I don't hear it too bad on my end. We're pretty good. There we go. Do you hear something? Yeah. Yeah, it is dampening it out a little bit. Are you on a computer? Yeah, I'm on a computer. If, uh, if you look in the upper left-hand corner of your Zoom, there, there should be an option that says turn on original sound. And uh, if anybody else has uh, their machines handy, they want Tony to uh, listen to, well, for one, it would be awesome if you could turn on original sound so that Zoom doesn't dampen out the noise because it, it thinks that the tattoo machine is noise. And, um, but yeah, get, get them ready. It would be fun. And or any other questions. Yeah, it's hard to hear the machines, um, how they're running through the little microphones. That's the only bad thing. <laughs> but it, it, it's cool to see them run, period. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I can't hear anything. Uh, to, uh, actually, Robert, you muted your mic. You're muted. Okay. There we go. Let me set you guys back here. So let's see. So Marco in the chat room says, uh, the first time I'm here and I'm liking it, I'm building a mill from scratch and scrap. And can't wow. wait to show you guys some of my prototypes. Awesome. Yeah. I've got like 10 to show, says, uh, again, Marco Antonio Meje Medina. Yeah, where, where are you uh, beaming in from, Marco? Yeah. I'm vaguely hearing something. Yeah, it's dampening it right out, unfortunately. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's hard to hear them through the computer. Yeah. It turned out great, though, man. I don't have a power unit down here, so I can't really run anything. Cool. 
So, uh, Nick, Matt, Eric, uh, anybody have any uh, particular questions? Uh, and in the meantime, well, well, yeah, I guess we'll just open up the, the floor, just pop right in. And uh, if we get five minutes or ten or five seconds of silence, then we'll, uh, well, then we'll make Tony be entertaining. Oh, I can entertain. I'll just start building another machine. <laughs> Let's get back to it. I'm sitting here. I have so much stuff around me, too. I'm like, man. I have a Rogers I'm working on from scratch in the in the vice right now. I just started actually before um, before we started the, the video, I was I was TIG welding this one, Robert. I don't know if you could see the joint yeah. underneath. Yeah. Yeah, I tigged it together. Three piece. Um, this is actually a, one of the base plates like we used that I uh, I had drop it down just a little bit. For focus yeah. yeah that's one of the base plates i use i already cut out and then i hand cut this side place i you can cut this side plate on the band so i have a band saw on the other side of the room here um i just put a new blade in it so i've been cutting some new stuff and uh yeah like i said i take welded together so it looks kind of dirty right now they're not as clean when you weld them up i don't know if you're welding or brazing but they uh, look pretty they look pretty ugly at first but uh, it, it, when when we were uh, when Gabe was running a video, I already started grinding this down. I use I use a uh, a Makita hand grinder, which is different than the way I taught you guys because I mean we just used files and hacksaws and it, the main thing we used was a drill press. But uh, when I do my regular builds, I don't do it that way. <laughs> Nice. Uh, so uh, uh, Melissa Smith says uh, th those machine sounds are like ASMR for ink addicts, <laughs> right? And, uh, I do have uh, I have a video here of uh, Rob's machine. A little quick time here. Oh, cool! So, yeah, that's what I want to show. This has got the uh, the sound going. A meat hammer. Yeah. That'll put it in. <laughs> Those coils are ripping, man. Yeah. And that was just the raw 516 regular 1018 steel. Yeah. That you use. Uh, I just found it in the garage. So that's uh, all. See, that's it. <laughs> yeah. That, that was the whole purpose of this is to just use what you had laying around. Kind of yeah. kind of think outside of the box. I didn't buy anything. No, cool. Even better. Yeah. Everything I just found in the garage. So that's awesome. Repurpose. Yeah. yeah I have stuff laying all over my uh, workshop. I figured um, today we could do a little tour of it. I was going to do it the first video, the first teaser video, like a little tour of my workshop. It's just a total dungeon wreck, and it, there's just stuff everywhere. <laughs> So I, I'll do that in a little bit. I'll show you guys around. But, uh, so, uh, so, so real quick here, uh, Marco is saying, uh, well, he's asking how often you guys are on. Um, so we're, we're doing, you know, uh, free ones like this, uh, you know, maybe once uh, a month, maybe twice a month uh, this month, because next next Wednesday you're interviewing uh, Greg from Veritas Irons. That's correct. Yeah, Greg DiGiacinto at Veritas Manufacturing. He's a good friend of mine from way back. Um, we swap tips and techniques together. Um, he has a different style than me. He's really polished and refined. He does a lot of mill work and a lot of CAD. He, he's not heavy CAD. He's still raw in the sense where he does everything um, hands on himself. He doesn't get everything cut by CAD, but he, he, he cuts all of his own stuff on lathes and uh, on the mill. So I think it'll be exciting to have him on and pick his brain. So I always learn something from him and, and he's just, man, he's just full of so much energy too. I just love the guy to death. So I think he'll be a great person to bring on and have people talk to like general public. I'm excited for that. So that is what Wednesday, the 17th of this month. And, uh, Wednesday, the 17th, that'll be up in the schedule. It might be in the schedule now, but it's going to be in the schedule by the end of the day. Uh, if, if it isn't. 
Yeah, and, and, um, and I guess the format will be every month we'll bring somebody in, but we'll, we'll open it to the public to, to have discussion, like open forum discussion. Um, I'm going to uh, show off a couple of the other videos that we actually have because Tony's been gracious enough to host a couple. And uh, so this is the Reinventing the Tattoo Community. And if you go to the library and then check out the video section and it's Reinventing the Tattoo Podcast is where we have some of these uh, interviews that we have. So this is where, you know, building a tattoo machine with Tony. This is actually, we could do some uh, Inception kind of shit if I, if I click here. I'm not going to do it though, because then we'd be watching a video of us watching a video of us watching a video. Point being is down here, we have uh, how to build a Paul Rogers style prefab. This is like an hour where Tony uh, talks about what, he, what he's going to do for this uh, seven, eight week uh, webinar, which is pretty cool. It'd be fun to watch that again to see how it played out. And then uh, we have the Tattoo Machine Madness. This is the Machine Builders panel. And if you're interested in um, the panel here, yeah, we've got a full on. Uh... Yeah, that's what we do with Guy and Greg. Wow. Yeah, Carson, Carson got okay. in. We are now live. And thank you very uh, much. So, Marco, if you want to join the video chat, to, if you I go know, to, was just, I'm all self tied. If you if you get in this and, app, uh, and then you go to events, you will see we've got join free webinar. Boom! And then you could uh, zoom right in, and then, uh, but but when you do that, you want to make sure that you mute or, or cancel out of the the video that you're playing, because otherwise, then we get into. Uh, audio panic, video panic, or uh, echo panic. Echo panic. Echo panic, echo panic, echo panic. Echo, echo. Uh, so, yeah, so I guess that hopefully that answers. Uh, if you're interested in some more of this, then there's uh, some sections there. And uh, again, Tony will be doing it the third Wednesday of the month. And um, yeah, we're excited. This is my mess. <laughs> this is where we're, this is where we spent eight weeks <laughs> right here on this poppy yeah so tony what are you going to do next what's your what are your thoughts and uh, are you going to do another course so that after people uh, have taken the the base one here and know how to do it by hand you could um, show them some best practices with you know modern tools yeah, I mean, we could get into that too. We could do a shorter series with modern tools. We could do different style um, machines. Uh, I, I build a lot of, well, my whole genre, the way I build is, I call it crusty, crusty and old. I, I, fabric, I fabricate machines to look, to replicate the old masters, the specific masters that I enjoy personally. There's other guys who do it too. There's, there's, but um yeah, there's some good builders out there can replicate older machines, but I like to build from just pretty much junk that I have laying around, like more of a steampunk style. So it'd be cool to show people how to do it with modern tools and do different style machines, like a Zeiss, or do a steampunk from scratch to give people ideas to expand their mind and have different options to build in different styles. The more tools you have in your arsenal, you know, the broader language you have for expression in, in my opinion and uh you, you, once you start with one that's in your vocabulary how to use the basic tools in, in your vocabulary you can Im incorporate these movements into your next piece your next build it's the same with that too you know and once you learn a bit of information you carry that on and hopefully you progress throughout your career um in this aspect, we start with the basics, but yeah, I, I, I would like to continue on. I do have like a Zeiss machine that I, I built for Skyver's um, fire relief few years back that I've done about 200 of. So I have like a template already set in the same style as the J frames. I, I have six J frames also that I do um, in Paul's style. And then it, there's uh. It, then there's the bendies, I call them the three piece. I just happen to have one sitting on my bench. This was built in 20 minutes from just crap I had laying around from previous builds and some just flat bar. I mean, it is not the prettiest thing, but it'll give you an idea. Yeah, it's not lined up or anything. I'll see you later. Let me just 
figured in. Well, that was cool. But yeah, I, I, I build things to look old and I, I can teach people how to, to achieve these results very easily. I'm talking with a guy in Italy right now. Um, he was a little perplexed on how, how these new machines look so old. Just for example, this machine was built last week. And you would think it's been laying under someone's car for like five years. It's just gnarly. And that's, that's the look I go for. You know, it's a specific style. And you can see the parts are utilized from just things I found in flea markets, garage sales, stuff I've had laying around the house, different tapes, different metals. But, you know, for, for a builder budget, like a quick budget, you could build a really cool piece of art. And that's, that's what I go for. Um, yeah, I could CNC or whatever. But this is about creating the art. So getting back to it. Yeah, Gabe, I'd like to uh, expand and continue on and teach. Cool. Hey, let me, uh, let me run another clip here. This is, I believe, from the third webinar. And uh, we, could, we could check it out a little bit and then maybe uh, talk about it a little. 16 holes with these 832nd um, screws. So when you get into final... Um, locking this down to drill it or mark it or wear it, it yourself, you will huh. have some room to just manipulate forward, backwards, side. Not much, not really much, but just enough. All right, so now we're in the full on jig mode. Spring <laughs> shelves on, base plates on, geometry is set. Not a boom. The uh. <laughs> I, I, it was so awesome to watch this come together. I got to say, yeah. I'm glad. But yeah, you know, I enjoyed. <laughs> it like watching I yourself on video is never a, a good thing, and so it's also thank you everybody who is uh, beaming in uh, and getting on camera. Um, you know, one of my I don't, I don't know if he still feels this way, but one of my favorite uh, memories is Jeff Gogway saying something to the effect of, you know. You know, I, I, I don't I don't really mind, you know, watching myself on video, except for, you know, the way I look, the way I sound and the words that come out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. But, but I, will, uh, I will say when you're in the moment of creation, you don't think about that at all. You just you think about what you're doing. And to me, I've done it for so long. I've been doing this 20 years that the hardest part for me was explaining the steps. Like I had to come in every morning and write down where my thoughts would go. Cause I don't know about you guys. I'm severely ADHD. I have a hundred different things going on in any given moment. And if I don't write a list, I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> building for 20 years, I have it in my head. I have the list built in. So I just do, but you have to keep in mind, you're, you're trying to teach other people. So you need to express these thoughts in an organized, clean manner that they understand. And uh, that's difficult when you're just like, ah, just do it. You know, I just know how to do it. I just do it. Yeah. You know? Nice. So uh, Eric just joined. Thanks for, uh, for beaming in. Do you, uh, if you wanted to uh, unmute yourself and uh, let us know, can you hear us, Eric? What's up, dude? Yeah, I'm at my day job. Uh, just tuning in. <laughs> That's cool. How you doing today? I'm um, I'm good. Uh, I'm pretty new to all of this. Uh, yeah. I'm apprenticing. Okay. Do you use so coil machines, new. rotaries? I, I haven't used any machines yet. Oh, you don't use any, so you're so, so brand new. Okay. Yeah. The, um, we were kind of overviewing a, 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 a we did seven weeks, eight week course on building a tattoo machine. Yeah, so yeah. we're just kind of recapping and hearing people's stories and talking about it. Um, wh where do you, uh, where do you apprentice at? Uh, we're over in Maryland uh, with the Beyond the Pale studio, a little tiny one person studio. Amy Nichols is the artist. Oh, right. Oh, awesome. The, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tony, I thought Amy is the lady who uh, I tagged you or yeah, I tagged you with, or you, you had replied to her post on the community. And uh, she yeah. has the Apprentice Diaries, a whole podcast uh, for apprentices, around apprentices. I just, she just posted something or she commented on something I posted the other day. Yeah, that's right. I just friended her or something. Oh. 
Yeah. Cool. Eric, do you have any tools or access to tools or? Uh, a little bit, <laughs> not a lot. Cool. Uh, you don't need much. <laughs> I, would say, yeah. I, would say, I will tell you, you don't need, you need much. A drill press, a hacksaw, some files, some sandpaper. Yeah. yeah. So like worst case scenario, you need to find a friend with a drill press, right? Like, you know, that might be Yeah, I have one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, there we go. It sounds like you're ready to go. Yeah, Craigslist <laughs> generally pick them up pretty cheap now, 25, 30 bucks for a little craftsman that'll get you by. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just kind of taking it all in. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for uh, for beaming in and for, uh, you know, participating. It's great to, uh, you know, to get to meet new people and get to put faces behind, uh, you know, some of the, the, the messages in the chat rooms and stuff. Yeah, that's cool to see everybody face to face. Yeah. Uh, so, Tony, you want to talk a little bit about your convention too? I mean, while we have people watching, and you yeah. you have a whole tattoo convention you're running. Oh yeah, it's it's. We were supposed to do a uh, me and my partner Elizabeth were doing a convention in Akron, Ohio. Um, we have family there, and a lot of really great Ohio artists came behind us and supported it. We were supposed to do it right before COVID, July through August of last year, but the, the you know with everything that happened, we had to put it down. Now this year, you know, we talked about it and thought about it. Instead of pushing it forward, um, July August is just I think it's too 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 quick. So we pushed it to July, the end of July in 2022. It's called the Rubber City. Um, tattoo invitational no it's, it's not really an invitational it's open to artists but it's limited so if anybody's interested you can contact me or you can go through the the rubber city tattoo invitational uh instagram or facebook to contact us for information uh, we we had a lot of great artists lined up we still do a lot of people held on some people bailed you know which is understandable you know, it, it, we were in crisis mode last year. Nobody really knew how this virus thing was going to play out. And we kind of still don't know, but it seems to be opening up and getting a lot better. So looking forward, um, you know, I'm excited. It, it I will tell you, it's really difficult for me to sit on my hands and wait another year. When we decided to sit tight, I was, well, uh, I just didn't want to do it, but I'm very geared up for this show. Uh, I know Gabe will be there doing seminars on business and promoting. Yeah, we're like Hopefully, we can get Guy to come out. I don't know about that, but I know Damon Conkin was on board. Um, Mohawk Jesse Yunker, Tim Seitz. Who else we have lined up? Anthony Massimino. Um, some buddies from New York. Awesome. A, lot of, a lot of good things. Yeah, James Vaughn. Couple guys I'm from sure, or coming out from Italy. I'm sure uh, a guy will be in the uh, like the reinventing booth and you know maybe do like an art jam or a drink and draw or something. And that'd be awesome. Yeah. But uh, cool. Have we had uh, another. Hey, Paul. Oh, Paul, you just uh, beamed in, beamed out. The uh, we're just uh, eh, there. You go. You you, you understand Zoom good. Uh, <laughs> how, how are you doing? You want to introduce yourself? Let us know how you're uh, involved in the circus. Are you talking to me? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I was hoping to stay quiet. I'm actually on my phone at the minute um, when okay. I got the email. Okay. Ah, fantastic. Hey, well, uh, feel free to, to pop in the background. I usually just like try to force people out to uh, to catch up with them and uh, say hi. And, um, but I definitely don't want to get people in trouble if they're at work or uh, on other calls. <laughs> but welcome. Thanks for uh, for beaming in. So yeah, we were talking about the next build, like what we were thinking about doing. And I do a lot of these these Zeiss copies. And it's it's kind of like the similar vein of what we just did. Oh no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know which direction we might take this next next uh, course. I'd like to get some feedback, like maybe get a couple people. Uh, who request like a certain style of build. I think we could do a steampunk. We could do another um, J frame. We could do, we could just do something from nothing. Like, you know, take a piece of bracket and braise it together and make a machine out of it. 
it's a, it's a similar process, same but different, but we could go over brazing, welding, um, TIG, MIG, um, milling, drilling, geometry, like it, 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 the, uh, the information is just, the amount of information out there and retained is just, it's untapped. So we, I could talk for days about different things. So just depends on where everybody wants to go with it. I, I thought the Rogers was a good stable build for a baseline to get like an inch entry level. It's a little more than entry level. Um, but I feel like we went over the mechanics well enough that people could, they could jump on like jump start on their own now and just break away and do their thing. Um, but again, there's all, there's a lot more that I could go into and help people with. And I, I enjoy doing in that game i enjoy teaching people this it's it's it's, it's very fulfilling uh, you know you should work on your comic routines a little bit but uh you know yeah, yeah. No, it was fun <laughs> the, uh, so uh, mackenzie <laughs> what i do <laughs> uh, mackenzie do you want to uh, introduce yourself let us know how uh, you're involved in this or uh, what interests you about tattoo machine building um, well, I put together a Seth Safari build it kit. That's about as uh, much as I've um, put together a machine. And I've also built jail cell style um, uh, tattoo machines homemade out of like motors from ta uh, tattoo shavers, but from beard shavers and uh, whatever knickknacks I could find from the Salvation Army. Um, I have access to welders and all that stuff. My previous occupation was fabrication. So um, it's kind of nice to see how you uh, break these little plates of billet down and shape them with band saws and use a drill press to whatever, do whatever you have to do. Yeah, so you have a good feel for, you already have a good feel for what we're doing, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, um, uh, except for the uh, coil wraps. I'm, I don't know much about capacitors and coil wraps or, or how they work. I, I just know it by description when I read about unloaded machines and how they should be tuned and stuff. But tuning is like a whole brand. Like It's like a science that I'm still trying to get down. Um, my apprenticeship was four years, but due to politics in the shop, I uh, willfully walked out because I couldn't stand what was happening in there. There's so many haters in this game, but uh, I do like learning. Right, well, when you have to surround yourself with good people, in my opinion if you want to move forward and um, block out the noise, the background noise, you do you. That's what I always tell people. I, I get a lot of fellow artists. They'll call me and they'll talk about the, the drama and the drama has always been in the business, not to talk about it, but just block that out and do you and don't worry about everything else. Um, my, there was a shop that opened up a block away from me. I've been in Pittsburgh my whole life. I'm 51 years old. I was, I was the first shop to open within the city limits since the 60s. Nobody else would open a tattoo shop in the city. They were afraid. And I was told that I couldn't do it, and I did it. As soon as I did it, everybody started doing it. Shop opened up a block away from me. I called my dad, and I'm like, you know, what am I going to do? These people are opening up. And he said, you know what? Don't worry about them. You do what you do. Keep your head down, and just you'll see. And he was right. You, six months later they were gone so you just you continue forward and you do what you got to do sometimes it's not just about that it's just not there aren't very many people that want to share their craft yeah well i grew up in that generation of tattoo artists like there was very few when i started in uh 89 i went shop to shop and there was only three like in a 30 mile radius here and they just slammed the door in your face they weren't willing and then as the 90s generation came in, it was the same thing. I did see a big change, though, in the late 90s with information. And especially when the Internet opened up, there was a lot of criticism about it. But I do agree. I understand people are very tight lipped. And I'm guilty of that myself. Like I, I wouldn't share my tricks or tips or secrets with anybody. I got this way um, by my own hard work to a point. And then, and then I met some individuals who gave back to the industry and I kind of looked up to them and they started feeding me information and teaching me the right way to communicate with other artists. Once you're comfortable within yourself and what you do, 
then you then then feel free to give it back it's not going to hurt you you know and i used to think that like it, it's going to hurt me or they're going to get better than me it, it was like this whole competitive thing and that is heavy in our industry but it, it, again it's just once you're just comfortable with yourself and doing what you're doing you don't worry about it yeah. not to get off key or get off point of what we're talking about but um that's just my experience with it you know and it, it, if i can share some information or shed some light on my experience hopefully it'll help you you know push forward in a different direction well i have a best friend who owns a shop here in town and uh he's been tattooing for a long long time and he apprenticed properly under um, a guy that studied under horiyoshi and uh um my best friend who i grew up with told me that i should not be tattooing and i realized there that he was no longer a friend of mine so I mean, that's that's as how, how deep the hate gets, in my opinion, in this game. And it's not just talking and communicating with other tattoo artists. It's people that are willing to share information. That's the hardest part. I could talk to all tattooers in San Francisco, but will they share information and help me get better? Uh, <laughs> that's like a crapshoot, you know? There's a lot. I mean, in my opinion, speaking for myself, lots of haters in the tattoo industry. Never met so many haters in one industry. I mean, music industry might be a little different or whatever, but in the tattoo industry, the hate game is so big. Oh, I mean, it's, uh, the, the stakes are pretty high, right? You know, yeah. between the responsibility of marking people for the rest of their life, uh, the uh, experience that they're going to remember, you know, the, the dough that's involved with it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, uh, there's also a difference, obviously, between, you know, responsibly sharing knowledge and, you know, trying to like keep business for yourself, right? But, uh, uh, but hey, so I got a, a, a chat here from uh, Matt Black says, uh, I don't have a video or mic as I'm at my day job, currently an apprentice in East Tennessee, uh, trying to learn all I can about the tools of the craft. Uh, my first experience with a machine was making an old national talent frame run, but that was just rooting through the parts bin and making it look like one that was running. Uh, I really appreciate the platform to learn, exclamation point. Thanks, exclamation point. Um, yeah, that, it, reinventing is a great platform. It, it really opened my eyes, especially the artwork. The art jams are amazing. The bio jams um, and the talent. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, I don't even know why you guys have me on here sometimes. That's, that's how I feel. Like, these, these are the heavy hitters that are, that are getting down on the daily but they're so humble that, and they give back. I mean, that, that falls back to the conversation we just had. Well, well, I'm, I'm sure that uh, guy took a, a fair amount of heat, you know, for reinventing the tattoo right back in the day, right? He's like writing the book on tattooing. Yeah, I and, uh, you know, it's real easy for people to, to misconstrue that and, and whatnot. But, hey, so I do want to, uh, I've got another uh, clip here. And uh, we've got about maybe another uh, 10 minutes or 13 minutes. So if uh, anybody has less questions, get them prepared. But um, in the meantime... I'm going to uh, share another clip. I think this is from six. This is webinar. This is the intro to webinar six. So, yeah, I think you actually talk about what you were doing in the past <laughs> one. I love how you embarrass me. Uh, okay. <laughs> the button is clicked. You're on. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to episode number six. Six <laughs> of how to build uh, Paul Rogers style tattoo machine welcome to my basement my workshop my home away from home last week we were talking about cutting springs and where were we moving forward from there yeah, we're we talking were... about cutting springs um what else we talk about putting this puppy together and we should do a drum critique finish. of this game. Um, we, that, <laughs> we could. We finish putting this together. <laughs> you know, it's a little early for me generally. But, uh, um, no, no. We are building this from, <laughs> from uh, scratch, from raw materials, from things we have laying around our shop. We have two options here. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to make upper and lower binding posts. Two different ways. One, um, I use pre-bought quarter inch hex 832nd. It was uh, very fun to, uh, every week, it was amazing. Yeah, but. Not so embarrassing. Uh, hey, Ricardo, how goes it? Pretty good, man, oh. how about you? Sorry, I don't have my headphones with me. Uh, no worries, you're very clear when you do, but this seems to be working. 
Cool. All right, joints are late, man. I had a pretty busy morning this morning, so. Uh, no problems at all. The uh, do, do you have any experience building machines or? Uh, a little bit, not not from the ground up, not from the ground up. I mean, you know, I knew how to uh, cut springs and stuff like that, and you know, uh, mess around with an armature bar and stuff like that. Uh, you know, some of the geometry on the framework, but nothing like what you've been sharing with the with us, man. So. That's one of the things I was telling Gabe uh, earlier was that this is an incredible thing that you're doing. You know what I mean? Like sharing this information with us, dude, it's, it's, it's an awesome experience. I I appreciate that. Um, It it just, it feels good just to give back. You you know, I I spent a lot of time building machines in the early two thousands. I was really heavy in it. Um, The coil game and then the rotaries hit and it just, a couple things happened there and I just, it just knocked me off of my square and I backed out for a few years. Yeah. Gabe reached out to me and brought me back in and just re-sparked it. I, I, I thought, I mean, I never thought coils would die out, but it, it did take a back seat for a minute. Um, it's kind of cyclical, I guess it, it, it's come forward front again. And, and I appreciate that you guys enjoy it. You know, I don't think it's something that we need as an industry that we should turn our backs to. It should always be there because this is where it started. You know, the doorbells. Yeah, agreed. What we do, it's in our bloods, that sound. Like, I can't, it's the generation I grew up in. Like, you know, I walked into some of these new conventions and there, there's no music, there's no buzz. It's, it's it, it like loses something for me, so. Yeah, it's cool to be able to uh, see y'all rallying around and appreciating it. You know, and it feels good, and, and, and it and it makes me want to continue down my path in a in a different journey. So, thank you for everything. I appreciate. Yeah, that. man. You know that that you're welcome, dude. And that's cool as hell that you're you're talking about that because I was just mentioning that to a couple of people that I met here on the forum. Is uh, there's something that I miss about that noise? You know what I mean? And there's something that's, uh, it's pretty magical, dude. Like just that buzzing noise and the smell of green soap in the air. And like you said, yeah. man, the music and stuff, you know what I mean? Like it was a time and place, dude, you know? And it's, it's, a, it's kind of one of those things where it's unfortunate for a lot of the new dudes coming in that they didn't get the experience. And I, I think you're right where, um, you know, I've always been able to take a machine apart, put it back together, what's there, and then make it run the right way. And it's one of the things that I've always taught to people that I helped learn how to tattoo too. You know what I mean? Like this is the basic, this is the basic foundation right here. This is what, this is what makes it all happen. You have to understand that. And um, some of the people never thought about it. And then they, they came to appreciate it that much more because of it, you know, and like, and that, that's, uh, that's a, some fucking awesome thing, man. And, uh, you know, and like you're talking about making things with your hands, dude, it's, um, that's one of the things I've always told my kids too. Like once you learn to do something like that, a craft, nobody will ever be able to take that away from you, you know? And, and the fact that you shared that and they let people learn how to do it is fucking radical, dude. Radical. Thank so, you. yeah, man. I, I shared in one of the, uh, one of the segments, my father told me, he's like, as long as you can work with your hands, you'll be able to eat. Yep. He, he gave me the tools um, indirectly on how to do this. You know, my dad, he was a cement mason. He was a uh, carpenter. He could, he's a jack of all trades, but he taught mm-hmm. himself all this stuff. So he kind of passed that down. So I, I think you're spot on telling your kids that, um, handing the, that information over to them. Yeah. I, I, I agree 100% on that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that's getting kind of lost in, in our world now. You know, like everything's so convenient, you know what I mean? And, and there's, there's a, there's a bit of a, of a, you know, of a benefit to that. But at the same time, you know, we're getting lost in the fact that that builds a confidence in you too, you know, like being able to make something by yourself when you look around at the shit that's laying around you and how do I make this work? You know what I mean? There's, there's invention and, and, and uh, dedication in that too, you know? So yeah, dude, I, I agree with you. Yeah, getting those wheels grinding, innovation, expanding innovation. your mind, looking at things in different lights, yeah. for sure. That's cool. Where Where are you at? Where are you from? Oh, I'm in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Okay. Cool, man. Yeah, I'm in. Cool. Uh, 
Go ahead. No, I'm good. I just said born and raised here. All right. On. Did you get to travel a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah I used to do uh, about 13 to 18 conventions a year for a lot of years. Wow. A lot. Damn. That's Look, crazy, man. You, uh, you ever heard of Mike Skyver? No, I haven't. He used to have a museum. He he uh he was from about an hour and fifteen minutes away from Pittsburgh, and Mike took me under his wing in the mid nineties when I started to build build tattoo machines. Okay. And Mike was he had one of the largest museums aside from Lyle Tuttle at that time in the United States, and uh, he let me travel with him everywhere he he took me some places and, and not to segue out of this but i have yeah, a yeah. funny story about one of the first conventions that he took me to um in the early 90s it was detroit and he's like come on up to detroit you could sell some of your machines in my booth we'll split the booth you know pay me whatever so we get up to detroit and this is the first show i had done since like 92 and he's like, yeah, we're right next to Guy Atchison right there. Now, I grew up a really big Guy Atchison fan and Aaron Kane fan. It shows in a lot of things that I do. Oh, yeah. And, uh, dude, when he said that, my stomach <laughs> hit the floor and I was just like, Mike, I can't. I can't, I, I can't be <laughs> next to Guy Atchison. I'm just not on that level, dude. Yeah. And it was just, yeah, it was, it was a funny experience. Not to get away from what we were talking about, but it just brought back a memory. No, that's cool, man. But it's come I, full circle now. <laughs> yeah. It took 25 years, but it's full circle. It right. flies by, doesn't it? It does. It's, it's it does. incredible. You know, and, and sitting here, and I keep looking into this camera at myself, and I'm like, damn, how did I get so old? Because I still feel like I'm 15. <laughs> seriously like i got gray hair now i'm like no i'm only yeah, dude. five still yeah 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 it's so crazy isn't it man like I, I do the same thing i see all the grays popping up in my hair man i'm like i gotta shave my head again yeah what the fuck dude like <laughs> you know i don't i don't feel like i'm 43 you know what i mean i feel like like you said dude i feel like i'm still in my 20s and shit so yeah. well, what were we i guess doing? yeah yeah, so, the life, the lifestyle we li we live that we've been blessed with, you know, it's 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 not. I don't know. It's enlightening for the most part, so it keeps you young at heart. Yeah, dude, it really does, man. I have a lot of clientele that you know. I'm fortunate enough to be able to tattoo them, and and um, I feel blessed as well. And because I, I, when I hear them talk about their jobs, sometimes, dude, and they're they're fucking miserable. You know what I mean? they hate it. And I, I, it makes me appreciate what I do that much more, dude. Like these guys are just biding their time until they get their pension at like 60 something. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, you're missing a whole lot of life in that process, man. Yeah. But, we definitely have the best job in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of them for sure. Yeah. 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 You know, maybe on that, on that note, I'll uh, relate something that I was talking about with one of the tattooers and then, uh, to, you know, we thank everybody. Tony could close it out, but um, we were just talking about the resilience of tattooing and, and tattooers, and it was like, you know, it, you know, if it clearly you could build a machine by hand, uh, but even if the power went, oh, I guess I was talking about how the COVID situation helps this internet thing, right? So now all of a sudden, everyone's forced to come into the digital world. <laughs> it's not just geeks anymore, and. Um, <laughs> But then I was like, you know, I, I personally fared pretty well through this, but like the next uh, traumatic uh, world event, like when the internet goes down for fucking two months, you know, then I'd be pretty fucked, right? Because like I'm all internet all the time, right? So when that, it, what, it's not a question of if, like when that happens eventually at some point, because it's just a matter of time, um, I'm going to be fucked. But tattooers, man, you don't even need power. You know, you could like assemble this shit, like, and they did, they used to, right? Some of the uh, archaeologists, uh, programming that we have coming up no. we're, we're looking at like the ancient mummies that are tattooed and stuff and uh you know if you show your clients a, a good tattoo experience they'll come back with their friends whether you even have power or not it's uh, probably the most enabling uh craft that could possibly exist right it's amazing yeah yeah absolutely well if that ever happens then we'll just uh We'll find a rally point and we'll get together and we'll whittle some sticks and tattoo each other we'll find <laughs> hell yeah count me in yeah man we are blessed to be able to do what we do Gabe that is for sure 
I can scribble on people every day for cash and prizes. Like, it's the best game show ever, man. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on down. Come on down. What do you want? <laughs> Come on down. Yeah, you got it. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. I'm going to uh, spotlight uh, Tony, let him uh, close out the show. And then I've got two videos I'm going to play, one for the Equinox Festival and the other for uh, the Drunk Critique. That's tonight. And uh, everyone is encouraged to send their tattoo pictures to get a at drunkcritique.com. But uh, here, let me get uh, Tony on here. And uh, oh, I just removed the spotlight, not putting it on here. Spotlight for everybody. Here we go. Spotlight of my junk. Hey, thanks. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, joining us today and sharing their stories and showing their machines. And we will be, uh, when is it? March, yeah, March 17th, we'll be having a, <clears throat> a, a, a an inter interview with Greg DiGiacento from Veritas. Um, hopefully we'll see you there. Thanks, Guy. Thanks, Gabe. Um, this has been an amazing experience building these machines and um, I'm fortunate to have spent some quality time with a lot of you great artists. So thank you. I hope to see you again soon. Awesome. And then I will do the uh, full on, you want to go to reinventingthetattoo.com slash build a tattoo machine. And the all the webinar replays are there. And we will, if you have any uh, questions or comments, you can just let us know right in the course, and we will get emails about it and all that. And uh, awesome, thanks again, everybody. And these are the two videos. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I lost my that a boss. Were you flossing just now? Yeah, I was flossing. <laughs> <laughs>knew my old age was catching up man i can't hear anything for usual uh guest drunk critiquers include avad the son of uh sean barber uh jen little and uh thea duskin and uh uh, well, anyways, that's uh, so that I don't know if the sound was on there, but it is drunk critique. So I guess it's not supposed to be all that uh, great. Anyways, uh, drunk, get a <laughs> at drunk critique dot com. Uh, Bob Tyrell and Tony Rommel. Yeah, Bob Tyrell, Tony Rommel are going to be co-hosting. We've got uh, Ivana, uh, Sean Barber, uh, Thea Duskin, Jen Little and all sorts of surprise uh, guests. So, yeah, awesome. We'll uh, we'll catch up, everybody. Um, I guess while we have everybody here 